观众朋友，大家好，非常高兴又和您相聚在国家大剧院的线上音乐会。那么今天呢，我们要欣赏到的是一场古典音乐盛宴，呃，是由著名的深圳交响音乐总监兼首席指挥官。Today we're going to appreciate the conductor Lin Daiye and the orchestra of the Grand National Theatre, as well as our young French horn performer Zheng Yun to present us the performances. And walk us into the music world of Mozart and Mahler. First of all, we have invited two guests. First one, the conductor Lin Daiye. The other, Gao Yi, editor in chief of NCPA Classical Music Channel. Hello, everyone. I am conductor Lin Daiye, and I am Gao Yi from NCPA. So. This classical music concert is themed under the wild guesses of life. If I'm your student and I got a composition with that topic, I think there is a large space to compose. Actually, for the two composers, Mahler and Mozart, they're legendary, and their whole life is representative of wild guesses. For example, Mozart. Mozart has a short life. He lived for only 35 years, but in such a short span of life, he created numerous classical masterpieces, and they are still being performed repeatedly. So it is imaginable that in the short life of Mozart, he had a lot of white gases. 35 years old, putting today, is just the starting point of our careers. Many of our youngsters have just stepped into the workforce since 35, but Mozart has already left behind so many memorable masterpieces. And for Mahler, be it his life or the era he was living in, they were full of different wild guesses, wild incidents, and stories. According to my understanding, for the two artists, the most splendid moment of their lives. Were usually the period for them to create the most mature masterpieces. So for this concert, we could listen to their best masterpieces at their prime time. This is the happy hour for the spectators. We could feel the booming of life. So like you have introduced, the wild gases of life bestows the spectators in these concerts a new chapter for them. To start their own journey of wild gases, so there are two sessions. Firstly, Mozart, and second session is about Mahler. So we have a clip about Mozart. Mozart is one of the most well-known classical musicians in this world. As a representative of classical period in the music history, he had a very soft and delicate touch in music. His rhythm is soft and smooth, and his emotions and formalities have been in perfect harmony. According to the records of Mozart, the most interesting point about him is his talent. He composes very quickly. His notes and rhythm almost come from nowhere, and he has rich inspirations. Even though he lived for only 35 years, he left behind over 600 works. And the one thing that determines his position in music is about the symphony and the piano masterpieces. For the other masterpieces, they were also the legacies of classical music. In terms of concerto, Mozart is very mature in his inventions, particularly the. Number four in E flat major. He wrote it in his thirties, and 
five six of his life has passed by so he was very mature he was even premature at five years old he could play piano and at eight he could play in public and at eight he published the first work so that's really overwhelming and actually at 30 years old in his artistic career he was already very mature and the classical spirit could be fully enshrined in his work and he also delivered the French horn a very poetic touch so I think this uh, concerto number four could represent his understanding and in orchestra if we could use an adjective to describe French horn what is its role in one word I think the French horn is the mainstay so it's very core position why it's also the transitioning according to literature the French horn might be the longest standing musical instrument for the ancestors when they hunt they would dig some holes into the horns of the animals and then they blow into the holes with different holes at the horn there will be different rhymes so that could be the earliest instrument for people to transmit information and then gradually with the times going by this horn gradually evolved into this musical instrument that's the history of horn and also in the orchestra usually the French horn we're working for of course there may be larger teams for Mahler he put eight French horns all together and for the four horns to be put in the orchestra that's standard we have once sung in chorus and usually there are four such roles and in the musical field when we are learning about the harmony we need four different parts and French horn played a very important role so in many orchestra the French horn and the Concorde gave us very strong power so what is the background of this piece of work of Mozart at that time being what was his status quo in life for him to create such a work when Mozart was writing it was the night it was the 1780s and the expression capacity of French horn was not that strong but Mozart composed four masterpieces about the French horn that was because of a very excellent French horn performer he met Mozart very early on and later on the both lived in Vienna and he was older than Mozart so together with Mozart's father and his entire family they had a very good relationship so Mozart p composed those French horn pieces for him and according to the list of the performances the second chapter is called romance how to interpret this there are some features for those pieces for example they are very elegant they are slow in rhythm for example in the concerto number four French horn is a very slow and lingering and elegant rhythm the whole music gives out a very poetic touch that's why we call it romance for such slow music it's also a huge challenge for the spectators it needs stability and patience for me I'm a layman if it's too fast I cannot even take my breath in but when it's slow it's more challenging yes indeed for you to blow it out loud it's already very difficult for a layman because just imagine the breath has to take its turns inside the musical instrument you need to blow in hard and if you have to perform this music very slowly you have to have a perfect control of your breath since Zeng Yun is working with you he's a very young performer so to work together with such a young performer is this very inspirational for you 
I have to say that Zheng Yun is a talent indeed. Zheng Yun is so young, and he could control such a complex musical instrument so intactly. That is indeed a talent. So for the first half of this concert, I think it's a dialogue between talents. We can name it this way. So the wild gas is a flive, and the dialogue between talents. That's our topic today. And today, due to the task, Zheng Yun cannot make it to our interview, but he had left us some notes and messages for this concert. Personally speaking, this number four concerto is one of my favorite French horn pieces, and I'm very excited to work together with conductor Lin Da Ye and the orchestra from the Grand National Theater. And I myself am a close friend with the performers, whether sitting among them or standing in front of them. We have um, been together for many times. And I am also the uh, chief guest of the orchestra. So I hope that in this new year, I could work more frequently with this team and bring more beautiful music to our audience. Have fun. Thank you, Zheng Yun, for your words. I believe that through today's music, through this wild gas of life, we could appreciate the fall of classical music and the shock it sends to our hearts. And then let's talk about Mahler. Mahler lived in the second half of the 19th century. He was born in 1860, and he was died in 1901, and he got very stringent education since young. For his family, they did some small businesses privately, but they were not very wealthy. So he grew by himself, and he was a very talented composer. He traveled in the world of music as the conductor. He once performed in Kassair Theater and some other famous European theaters. He left some footprints, and one day, he went to the Vienna National Theater, the sacred haven. For many musicians, that was like the summit of his career. And when he was alive, he didn't send very strong repercussions around the world. But when he died, people certainly rediscovered his value. He was like a fortune teller. He said that my era will finally come. That was said 100 years ago. Why did he say so? It testifies that while he was alive, his works were not recognized by people, and there are a lot of complex factors behind it. For example, he's a Jew, and due to historical reasons, he was treated unfairly. That was one thing. And another point is his invention tactics were too forward-looking, so that was unacceptable by his contemporary man. It's too hard. How? How come? Because um, his tactics were too complex. He put all of his thinkings and skills into one piece of work. He said that my symphony is inclusive. I have to put the whole universe into this one piece of work. So. Just imagine, you could feel a lot of thinkings interwoven in one piece of work. So for men living in those times, they couldn't get a clue from it. And also the length and the difficulty of his works were very high, so they were not widely accepted. But now, he is a fortune teller to all of us, and his words were now a reality. Or orchestras and the symphonies are now competing to play his works. And Mahler has become really a bomb in terms of the box office in the theaters. It's really hard because his whole life is complex. He felt that I am not understood by the contemporary man, and I have to express myself in my works. I totally agree. And according to you, it's extremely hard. So, Mr. Gao, how hard was it for him? There are two interpretations. One, hard to perform, and second, hard to interpret. So it takes time to accept his works. Actually, to perform the works of Mahler, particularly number five symphony, it's a very grand work. And the total size of the troupe 
is doubling that of uh, the time of uh, Mozart. For even one single musical instrument, it's even harder. And the coordination between different instruments is harder. They have to rehearse for a lot more time, and it carries a lot more contents. For the other composers, they put their whole lives into maybe just one chapter of Mahler's piece. So you could imagine how many contents Mahler put into his work. He may have uh, colliding emotions in just one piece of work. Because man is complex with the social involvement. We have multiple thinking patterns. To give you one simple example, Mr. Zhang or Mr. Li eat in the restaurant. They enjoy the food, and there are diversities of food. And those are usually the Bach. But for Mahler, the order in the restaurant, they feel the pleasure on their tongue. And then there are football games played in the TV. And this person's favorite team fail. And this person feels frustrated. And by his side, um, he got a call from the cell phone. It, w it is his lover, and he is happy. And suddenly, something bad happens in the restaurant, and he is in agony. And suddenly, on the street, there is one music ringing, and he suddenly feels the smooth emotion. So at the same moment, he has a mix of different emotions in a very short period of time. And that is normal for mankind. So that's about Mahler's music. You could imagine the difficulty of his performance and the complexity of his works. And that adds more barrier to the understanding of him in that era. So that's a good example for one person eating in the restaurant. One may feel just one emotion. The other may feel a mixture of emotions. I interpret their different works as transcripts. For Mozart, he has very clear description of different actors and actresses. If it's the antagonist, they have very clear description. But for Mahler, there may be multiple protagonists and also multiple support characters. And the protagonists and the support characters may be exchanged any time in his work. So there are thousands of possibilities in the interpretation of Mahler. And that's the charm of Mahler. Well, that's why also all of conductors are willing to perform Mahler. That's why it's wild guess. We have a lot of room of imagination, too many elements. We are about to appreciate the symphony number no. five. And one chapter number no. four is differentiated from the others. Listening to chapter number no. four, we feel differently. Could you please introduce more about chapter number four and what is the background of that chapter? In 1901 and 1902, he finished the symphony number no. five. He was had having a wedding with his wife in 1902, and he wrote this chapter in 1902. That's the time for his happiest time. He had this smooth marriage experience in that year. So that's why that chapter was stunning. So in the Romanticism, he wrote the most beautiful, slow-going chapter in the symphony. Only his own chapter number three could be comparable to number four chapter. So we could directly get to the heartbeats from that chapter. We could feel the warmth and the breath and the golden memories and expectations in that chapter. I got engaged with Mahler's works very late. When I was studying in the college, I finally got in contact with Mahler's music. And for the first time, according to my memory, a US expert introduced Mahler to us. And he showed us this music. And after listening to the music, I was shocked. All I could thought was that how could there be such beautiful music on earth? And he opened a new door for me. And finally, I became a fan of Mahler. To give you some preview, 
Before we start this interview, Conductor Ling told us that he loved this painting. Why? When I walked into this showroom, I saw this painting. I was attracted. I told Go that our director had very careful design. This painting was by Gustav, by an Austrian painter. And I said that if by its side there could be the book The Interpretation of Dreams by Freud, then this perfect. Klim and Mahler both were the patients of Freud. We know that Freud had some friendship with those two people. And back to the theme, the what gases. At those times, the painters, the musicians, they were all thinking wildly. When they get back to normal, they have to pay visits to Floyd to get some kind of treatment. So this painting was classic. And Gustav Klim used very vivid colors. Those colors could also be used to describe Mahler's symphonies. And this painting could reflect the theme. No matter how complex, how splendid the colors are in the painting, in the final analysis, it has a theme highlighted that is KISS, der Kuss in German language. In many works of Mahler, he wanted to express love. His topic for chapter number three is that love told me something. And also, we would love to highlight number four chapter in the symphony number five. It's also about love expression. With your explanation, I could feel that um, Mahler has spanned over different fields. And for any artists with so rich works, they must be sensitive. They surely are sensitive, but in different ways. For some artists, not just the composers, their sensitivity is outward. But for some composers or artists, their sensitivity, their sensitivity is more looking inward. So what about Mahler to the outside world or sensitive to his inner self? I think he's, to, he's sensitive to his inner self. But through some channel, maybe his works, he was releasing all the sensitivity in his hearts. He preferred isolated life, but in his music, he showed a totally different state. So just like you said, he is more sensitive from inside out. And Richard might be more outward. He prefers socializing, and he enjoyed his social status. And in his works, he enjoyed the grand, magnificent splendor in it. So now let's um, enjoy today's performance. I hope that through today's music and the performance of the orchestra of the Grand National Theater, our audience could read into Mahler and Mozart. <笑>好吧那我们就走进今天的演出希望大家能够通过音乐通过我们国家大剧院管弦乐团的演奏 <音>